The Jared Dillion Show. I'm Jared Dillion. This is The Jared Dillion Show. If you want to call to talk about your money, please call 844-305-7800. That's 844-305-7800. This is The Jared Dillion Show. So, some news out of the Fed today, which is a little discouraging. Discouraging for me. Uh, Now, the Fed is already doing a bunch of stuff. They lowered interest rates to zero. They're doing unlimited quantitative easing of treasuries and mortgages. Uh, They were buying corporate bond ETFs. They were buying LQD and HYG. Um, They were doing a municipal credit facility. I mean, it just, the list goes on. And they're talking about yield curve control. All of this is like emergency measures. It's not really an emergency anymore. I mean, everything's kind of fine in the financial markets. Like, there's no reason to do anything else. So today they announced that in addition to buying the ETFs, they were going to buy a broad portfolio of corporate bonds, which actually I thought they were doing before. I thought they were doing that before, but apparently not. And this is what the ECB was doing in 2014 um, under Mario Draghi. They decided to buy corporate bonds, and the um, the results of that were horrifying. <laughs> They bought so many corporate bonds that they drove yields actually below zero. There were some corporate bonds with negative yields in Europe. And we're going to talk about why that's bad. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. And certainly the Fed has the best of intentions here. They want to help everybody out. They want to uh, jumpstart the economy. You know, just as a side note... There's a big debate right now about whether the Federal Reserve causes inequality. And I don't think it's much of a debate. I think they do. And if you think about what they do with their asset purchases, they're buying bonds, treasury bonds, corporate bonds, municipal bonds. And who owns those bonds? It's like super rich people own those bonds, right? And they go up in value and super rich people make money. (laughs) <laughs> it's fairly straightforward. And whenever they start one of these facilities, it makes the stock market go goes up. And, and there's obviously more retail investors that own stocks, but generally it's people with that own money that own stocks. So everything the Fed does serves to exacerbate inequality. And the Fed takes issue with that. Jerome Powell said at his press conference, he absolutely denied that that was the case. Neil Kashkari, who was president of the Minneapolis Fed, he says that the Federal Reserve actually helps inequality. I don't know what planet these people are living on. And this is, if you look at our country right now, and, you know, inequality has gotten out to just obscene levels. And not, I don't really care personally you know, I don't, I don't have a personal stake in this. I'm just an observer, okay? And as if you throw up a chart of this over time, inequality is, has gotten to obscene levels. But we are literally having uprisings. It's like the 13th century. <laughs> we are having uprisings. We have an autonomous zone in Seattle. I mean, this is what happens. Anyway, that's a completely different discussion. So anyway, the Fed buys bonds which pushes bond prices up and interest rates down. So corporations get to borrow at lower rates. And that's what that means. When the Fed buys bonds, it pushes interest rates lower and corporations get to borrow at lower rates. Raises all kinds of interesting questions. I mean, you know, if you were if you were looking at this from Mars, if you were looking down on Earth and you might say, "Well, why is that bad?" Why is it bad that corporations get to borrow lower, at lower rates? And by the way, you know, this has happened with the Treasury market, too. Individuals get to borrow at lower rates. Fed funds is at zero. I don't even know where the prime rate is nowadays. The 30-year fixed rate mortgage is like three and a quarter, something like that. Why is it bad if somebody can buy a house and borrow at three and a quarter? Why is it bad if somebody can buy a Hyundai and get 84 months of 0% loan. Why is that bad? There's actually real reasons why this is bad. Okay, so let's just step back a second, and let's talk about 
what would happen in a Fed-free world, okay? If the Fed didn't exist, what would this look like if the Fed didn't exist? Interest rates would be higher, and some corporations wouldn't be able to borrow at higher interest rates, and they would go bankrupt. And you're like, well, that's bad. It's bad if corporations go bankrupt. Actually, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's okay if things fail. In fact, it's very good if companies fail. These are these are companies that should be bankrupt. They are bad companies. And the way this works is they are using up capital that could be allocated to better uses. We don't this is how capitalism works. You have two companies. One is good, one is bad. And the way this is supposed to work is if you invest in the bad company, then you lose your money and you are punished for your bad decision and the company goes bankrupt and whatever product that company was making doesn't exist anymore because it, it, it was bad and the market decides this. So all, c capital should be allocated to the good company. And what happens is, is that when we buy corporate bonds and we lower interest rates, all these bad companies can stay alive and they can keep producing their crappy products, which is not good. Our economy is the most dynamic free market economy in the world. And if you want to know why we have had super normal growth over the last 100 years and why we have had 10% returns in the stock market. It's not because of this. It's because of failure. It's literally because of failure because our system allows companies to fail. It allows products to go out of existence. It allows workers to be laid off. You say, well, we don't want workers to be laid off. Yeah, we do. They will find another job, and they will find a job doing something that is more productive than the bad company they were working at before. This is, this is what it means to have a dynamic free market economy. And the Fed is preventing that. They're preventing it. So... These are zombie companies. There's actually a word for this. We call them zombie companies. Companies that should be bankrupt. And like I said, they've already done this with treasuries. They push the risk-free rate down. So everybody gets to borrow at lower interest rates. And there's zombie people. <laughs> there's people that shouldn't buy a house. They should not buy a house. They have no business buying a house. And if we allocate money to these people, then it's a bad investment. And if you lower interest rates to super low levels, then we never get to find out. It's a misallocation of capital. It's what it is. It's a misallocation of capital. It's, it's this concept about, it's called the seen and the unseen, okay? And there was a French economist named Frederick Bastiat who talked about the seen and the unseen. Believe it or not, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We talked about this with the broken window fallacy. You know, people only look at what is seen, and what people see is companies get to borrow more cheaply and they don't have to lay off workers. And they don't look at the unseen, which is how this capital could be better used someplace else. This is all about preserving status quo. We're just trying to preserve the status quo. This is literally out of Atlas Shrugged. It's absolutely out of Atlas Shrugged. You know... Look, I'm not in favor of this, but I'm not in charge. I am not chairman of the Fed. What if I what if I was chairman of the Fed? Well, interest rates would be at 3% and we wouldn't be doing any of this quantitative easing. But seriously, what should the Fed be doing? They should be allowing things to fail. You ever heard that phrase, don't just stand there, do something? I like to say don't just do something, stand there. They should do nothing. They should allow companies to fail. We should have bankruptcies. We should have layoffs. Nobody's going to die. Nobody's going to die. People will find jobs. People will lose money, but that's temporary. And people learn their lessons. Capitalism without failure is socialism. And this is what we have today is we have capitalism without failure. What is the benefit of failure? Well, we don't learn anything from success. 
we only learn from failure. You learn about the mistakes that you made and people move on and maybe they make the same mistakes or maybe they don't make the same mistakes. But nobody dies. People lose money and they'll try not to lose money next time. And the crazy thing about all of this is that the Fed is doing this with stocks on the highs. What is going to happen if stocks crash again? What, what, <laughs> what kind of tools are they going to roll out then? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. The Fed, by the way, is never going to end this liquidity program. They started buying corporate bonds today. They're going to do it for the next 10 years, 20 years. They're going to be doing it forever, decades. They don't stop a liquidity program once they start. And I expect that corporate bond yields are going to go a lot lower. And like I said, Europe did this. They had negative corporate bond yields. You want to talk about zombie companies, zombie companies in Europe. Let me put this another way. You might understand this. If older firms don't die, then younger ones, younger firms can never take their place. And we did this in the financial crisis. We bailed out the banks. The big five banks were all bailed out. And smaller banks never got to get bigger and take their place. You lose dynamism from your economy. And the U.S. up until this point had the most dynamic economy in the world. We are going to become Europe, and Europe is going to become Japan. And I don't know what's going to happen to Japan. This is not capitalism. What we had prior to 1971 was capitalism. This was not capitalism. On that happy note, how was your weekend? I'm Jared Dillian. This is The Jared Dillian Show. Jared Dillion Show.